Hey guys, I'm back, and as you can tell, I'm back with a brand new Let's Perfect. And that Let's Perfect is Samurai Warriors and Samurai Warriors Extreme Legends. But I'll go through Extreme Legends down the road. But now, I will be playing on the original Samurai Warriors disc. So, as you already know, I've been looking forward to go through this game for a while now. I mean, I even announced during my Dynasty Warriors 4 Let's Perfect, the last one, that I'll be going through Samurai Warriors. And I don't want to delay it any longer than I have to. But I'm going to go through a little brief summary of the game. So, and yes, I will be comparing this to Dynasty Warriors. I do apologize in advance, but for the fact of the matter of everything I have done in the past, it's going to happen. Anyways. So, Samurai Warriors, if you compare it to Dynasty Warriors, the only real, well, there are a few differences here and there when it comes to the actual game and format. However, when it comes to the overall story, instead of having three kingdoms trying to unify China in the year 184, or technically later than that, up to the year 280, you have several clans, more than just three, trying to unify Japan, and this is around the late 1500s and the early 1600s, depending on the actual game you're playing. So, the concept is simple. You have to defeat the commander or fulfill the uh, objective at hand to win the stage and move on to the next one. And if you die, if you allow your commander to fall, or if there is a certain objective that you can't trigger or if the time runs out you lose so that's how it worked in Dynasty Warriors that's how it's gonna work here but um, before I even start let me go to the options real quick because I do want to adjust something um, where is it I think settings I'm gonna keep the difficulty at normal uh, I think it's controls. Yeah, I want to make sure I turn the vibration off because uh, you're definitely going to hear that through the mic if I actually keep it on. So, just want to make sure I got that done. There we go. Because I actually have no save file right now on this memory card. Uh,. Yeah, let me change the uh, audio to mono, just in case if for some reason one of my splitters act up, and <laughs> you'll probably hear one side and not the other. With this, it'll be kind of uh, less uh, apparent, if that makes any sense. Anyways, moving on. Alright, we're good. Okay, now we'll actually start. So, your Musu mode in this game is your story mode here. So, we have that, and just like Dynasty Warriors 3, pretty much the format is going to be kind of similar to Dynasty Warriors 3. More so than Dynasty Warriors 4. Keep in mind, I'm only going through or explaining games that I have done previously. So, in Samurai Warriors, you have a total of 15 characters you can play as. If you include Extreme Legends, you will have 19. So, and I do apologize, there's a lot for me to really go through in the first part. So, if it seems like I'm jumping from here to there or whatever, yeah, that's just me trying to make sure I go through everything. I could think of and not miss much and if I miss something I could actually say it again later on but anyways so yeah 15 characters all together in Samurai Warriors and if you include Extreme Legends you'll have an additional four thus giving you a total of 19 so with that being said here are your five default characters Yukimura Sanada, Hanzo Hattori, Oichi, Kenshin Uesugi, and Mitsuhide Akechi. So, 
for the fact that I went through Zhao Yun's Muslim World first in Dynasty Warriors 3, and he's pretty much the quote unquote poster character for the game. I'm going to go through the or play as Yukimura Sanada for the fact that he is quote unquote the poster character for this game. So here we go. enemy busy. Yukimura will lead a secondary force to strike Kenshin from behind at Mount Saijo Summit, forcing him to flee directly towards our main force below. Thus, a pincer is formed to squeeze the life out of the enemy. The plan is all set. Alright, so here's the first stage for Yukimura Sanada's story, or Yukimura's story. I'm probably going to be using the first name throughout the entire time, but once I show up the unit info and all that, I'll go through their full name. But anyways, moving on. So we have the Battle of Kawanakajima, and as you can see right next to the name, it says Field. Well, there are three different types of battles. Field, Castle, and Siege. Your field stage is typically your stages that you have seen in the past if you're playing any Dynasty Warriors game. Because technically, chronologically speaking, Dynasty Warriors 3 came out first, then Dynasty Warriors 4, and then Samurai Warriors a little bit after that. So, anyways, you can see the objectives here. There's no tab thing on the left side of the screen. So... We have to defeat Kenshin Uesugi to win if Shingen Takeda falls, if I die, or if the time runs out, we lose. So let me go through the equipment first. I don't know exactly how. Actually, I do have an idea. Never mind. So our default weapon is the Sickle Spear. In Samurai Warriors, there are five tier weapons, and that fifth weapon is your unique weapon. And then in Extreme Legends, there'll be another weapon altogether. Your quote unquote sixth weapon, or what the game likes to call it, the ultimate weapon. But we'll go through that later. Anyways, so here's our default weapon. Items, obviously, we don't have anything just yet, but we will down the road for sure. And the format is similar to Dynasty Warriors 3. However, Unlike in Dynasty Warriors 3, where you had several items max at 60 or 75 if you're limit breaking, or 40 or 50, and you have different maxes here and there, like the 60, 40, 20, and 16, here, the minimum of that particular stat will be plus 1, and it'll go all the way up through the max which is plus 50 unless you're playing extreme legends then the max is 75 but once again extreme legends will come later right now i'm going to be playing on the original disc anyways moving on bodyguards there are three different types of bodyguards here you have the shinobi which are your sky ninjas i'll talk about them for sure um as time goes on you have your Tepu, which are your musket troops. I'll talk about those as well. And then the Kengo, which are your your infantry troops, basically. And as far as I know, the max number of bodyguards you can have is four. Uh, unless you could get more than that, but every time I tried it, which isn't really much in comparison. Samurai Warriors is a game I really haven't 
I mean, I, I know I'm stalling so much right now, but I'm going to try to go through as much as I can before I actually start, but try to keep the time to a minimum, which is very fucking difficult, because as you know, there's so much stuff I can really say in one part. Uh, but yeah, the max I could seen is, four, well, the max I have seen for bodyguards is four. Uh, I really haven't played Samurai Warriors as much if you compare it what I've done with Dynasty Warriors, so there might be a few things that I will be learning throughout this Let's Perfect. Let's Perfect. Blah. Anyways. Uh, I'll set them to charge. Might as well. Alright, I show off the objectives. Now, the unit info. So for the Takeda army, we have Shingen Takeda and Forgive me when I say this, but I will fuck up on these names here and there, so bear with me. You have Shingen Takeda with Yoshinobu Takeda and Masakage Yamagata for his officers, and the max number of officers you could actually have in this game is four, unlike Dynasty Warriors where you could actually hold six at one time. But anyways, moving on. So we have Shingen Takeda with Yoshinobu Takeda and Masakage Yamagata, Yukimura Sanada, and Konoichi, Nobushige Takeda, Masetane Hara with Nobukado Takeda, Nobufasa Baba with Nobukimi Aniyama and Masatoyo Nato, Kansuke Yamamoto, and Masanobu Kosaka with Nobushige Oyamada. For the Uusugi forces, or the Uusugi army, he have Kenshin Uusugi, Kaginobu Uusugi with Takahiro Kitajo, Kajie Kakizaki, Yoshikiyo Murakami, and Masashige Jogo, Kagesuna Naoe, Shigenana Honjo, Saramitsu Usami, and Katsunaga Irobi. And one last thing, which is something I should have done a little bit earlier, is when you complete the, this stage and move on to the next stage, you'll see a bit of a story. And for some reason, in the first part, they won't give you that story. So I will go through that w real quickly before we actually start. So, Shigen Takeda, the Takeokai, invaded the neighboring fief of Shinano in an effort to expand his power. The warlords in Shinano knew they were no match for the Takeda army, and thus enlisted the aid of Kenshin Uesugi, the dragon of Eshigo. Kenshin vowed to oppose Shingen and led his massive army towards Kawanakajima in Shinano. Shingen mobilized his forces as well, and came face to face with the Uesugi army, encamped atop Mount Saijo. Alright. So, with all that being said, let's fucking do this. Alright, so, once again, there's so much I can really say in one part when it comes to the actual basics of the game. So, bear with me on that. Part of me was going to put it on easy, actually, I actually... Believe it or not, I actually had several videos where I had the first few stages on easy, but you know what? I'm gonna just stick with normal because uh, I really don't want to make it too easy because those videos were actually really easy. Anyways, so I'm gonna take my time with this and go through the basics of, of the actual game. So. As you can see in the bottom right corner, other than your KO count, you actually see a little objective there. You're going to be seeing that a lot, and those are missions, and these missions could potentially, in some way, shape, or form, it'll help you out, you'll gain experience over time, which is basically the gimmick with this game, or one of the gimmicks, and, uh, and Masa should get it down. Anyways, so that'll help you out there and also help you out when it comes to uh, boosting your stats up. But I'll talk about that as well when we uh, get there. Anyways, 
So, did I secure the gate already? Yeah, I did. So, I don't know if you saw it, I defeated, or my bodyguards defeated a reserve captain. Those are your gate captains, so to speak. However, unlike in Dynasty Warriors, where you just secure that gate, and that's it. Once you secure the gate, it actually becomes yours. So, a reserve captain will pop up for us momentarily. And as you can see, there we go. So, anyways, moving on. So, with these missions, depending on the stage and depending on the actual uh, mission at hand, it may alter the actual main objective at hand. And it could either help you win the stage or potentially uh, give you a game over depending on what the objective is, what the mission is, and if the mission actually changes or the objective actually changes, if it does. It's not going to happen every time, but there will be times where it will alter the outcome. Trust me on that one. I'll point out a few when I actually get to that. Anyways, now let's talk about the controls and the actual uh, control setup here. So, just like Dynasty Warriors, your typical attack is a square button. And keep in mind, I'm playing this on my PS2. There is an Xbox version. I don't own the Xbox version, but I do want to get my hands on that. That way, I can actually see what the difference is between the two. Because there are a few differences in Dynasty Warriors 3, Xbox version, and PlayStation 2 version. So, I definitely want to get my hands on that. Um, so, as I was saying, your typical regular attack is the square button, and then your charge attack is the triangle button. Once you have your move to gauge filled up, as you can see, like I have right here, you can perform your quote unquote musu attack. However, the musu attacks in Samurai Warriors are a lot different. Once you activate it, like I'll do right here, you'll stun everyone around you for starters, and then you can perform your musu attack. However, it's not like if you use your musu attack and you let it go, your musu gauge will stop at that point. Once you activate it, you're going to lose it all. It's just whether or not you want to use it to use your or activate your musu attack, let it go. You can actually stop your musu attack, and if you're trying to get around somebody, you could actually try to uh, perform it again as long as your musu gauge is still going down. If not, then it'll stop and then you'll be set. Also, note that we actually accomplished the uh, mission, so we're actually up atop Mount Saijo. However, Kenshin is not here. And he's gonna attack, uh, not yet anyways, but he will. No, it is too early for the pincer to have worked. Your trickery will not work against me, Nemesis. Your head is mine. <laughs> not making this easy, are you? Impressive, Kenshin. So, as I was saying, you could actually perform the Musu attack, but not use your Musu attack and just start attacking, and it will be a little bit faster. Uh, your regular attacks and charge attacks and such. However, when you perform any Musu attack and get KOs, I don't know if you saw it earlier, but you saw, if you did, you saw a big number five on the bottom right corner after I used my Musu attack for the very first time. Well, Getting KOs while performing a move to attack is actually a key role in increasing your attributes up. But I'll talk about that as well when we actually complete the stage. Once again, there's so much fucking shit I could actually say in one part. So, sorry for throwing all this fucking information because it's a lot. 
Excellent. Anyways, Keep moving on. So we took down that Strike Ninja. Those Strike Ninjas, if they attack you, they're going to send you fucking flying. So be careful with that. Why do you scowl? You must enjoy this battle more, Nemesis. All right, so I mentioned the controls. Obviously, you could jump with the X button, and in a few cases, there are a couple of characters that could actually double jump. Uh, Yuki Mori isn't one of them, but I'll let you know which ones do when we actually get to that said character. Anyways, uh, oh, keep in mind troops could actually perform a little to attack here or there, so just be careful with that. Alright, now we're gonna go for Kagesugu. Uh, Kagesugu. So, as I was saying... Any other controls I could think of? Right, so you have your range attack, but keep in mind, I don't know if you see in the bottom left corner, typically in well, with Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors, you actually have a arrow counter. Here, there's none. Why? Because, well, in this game, you actually are unlimited on how much ammo you have. Well, you're pretty much unlimited in ammo because, uh, well, with that, your guess is as good as mine. But each character might have a different range weapon. So that probably plays a key role in that. Anyways, so we have that. Uh, L, well, R1 is to aim, and then obviously the fire and all that stuff, you already know that. Your regular shot is the square button, charge shot is the triangle button, and if you want to perform a Musu shot, then obviously go through uh, or press the circle button. Anyways, so you have that. If you hold on to the L1 button, your block, but keep in mind, you could obviously uh, lose your guard if they have a very strong attack on you. Anyways, we're almost at the point that we need to be at. That little X that you see on the map, we actually have to head over there. So, anyways. And I'll tell you, even on easy, you're going to lose officers and generals, so keep that in mind. And I'm warning it now. Alright, now we're going to go for Kagenobu. Alright, there we go. So, more controls, which I have not much left. Holding on to the R2 button, instead of changing your enemy's uh, health meters, because that will automatically be given to you, you could actually dodge by rolling, which is actually a big deal. Because that will definitely help you out while you're stuck in a situation. Anyways, so we have that, and then the L2 button is just changing your map screen to the overall screen to your nearby screen. But in this game, whatever, well, when you zoom in, it's just an actual zoom in. Like when you turn, it's not going to turn with you. So, and these guys got to go. These fire ninjas suck because, uh, unlike with Dynasty Warriors 4, with one guy in the Bombardiers, those fire ninjas and their bombs could actually kill you. So, it's not like with one guy, you could actually, or with mines, you could actually run into them, even when you're low on health, and you can run to as many as you can, as long as a archer or crossbow, or a troop does not attack you, you'll automatically be fine. Here, if you get hit by one, and you're that low on health, they'll actually kill you. So, that's the part that will make things a little tricky with those guys. Anyways, let's go for... Uh, Kagesuna now way. Enemy 
Yeah, you see that number 14? That's how many Musu KOs I've performed. And once again, that plays a key role with uh, my attribute upgrades. But I'll talk about that when we get there. Keep up the good work. So, that's the controls for pretty much everything I could think of. Oh, if you press the R3 button, no big deal. You'll be able to change your camera's uh, screen screen layout but for me i don't see a real point in it personally unless you're in a close area or a close area and you're surrounded by troops so anyways so all we have left is kenshin and shigenaga so we'll go for shigenaga first and then go for kenshin all right so let me talk about, oh, let's take him out now. Yeah, let me talk about the uh, horse riding. So you could actually perform the same attacks here and there. However, when you press triangle, instead of actually attacking, it would do, well, if this guy doesn't fucking one shot me off the horse. Um, you could actually do a stomp instead of an actual attack. And if you're running, you could actually jump. I mean, your horse could actually jump. And in some cases, you could actually... Uh, yeah, let me take care of him first. Because the fire ninjas are running away. Also, when it comes to ranged troops and fire ninjas, they're actually fucking smart when it comes to scattering. Almost similar to Dynasty Warriors 3. Um, I have yet to really see how brutal they could be because I've been only been playing on normal and easy but with this let's perfect I'm hoping not to even touch easy and then obviously going through hard mode and chaos mode that's gonna be rough because I'm gonna have to go through both of them to get the weapons well kind of I technically will have to but I'll talk about that as well but not right now anyways so with that being said um Notice that you actually see a yellow bar above my health bar. Well, that's your horse's defense, kind of. Your horses don't get killed in this game, but if the troops do enough damage to you, you will get dismounted. So, I don't know if you saw it with the archers. I got shot a few times, and then I got dismounted. That's basically what that, that bar means. Anyways. Uh, yeah, like I said, there's so much I can really say in one part, um, without A, not forgetting anything, or B, putting too much information in there, and, uh, you know, because putting or saying too much information could, well, in my case, I know for sure, saying too much will have me forget other, uh, other shit, so anyways, so... We secure the gate again. Uh, I'll talk about item drops and all that as well. So, and I'm pretty sure you saw me pick up a few items already. I'm going to talk about the ones I already picked up. So, your health in this game, if you see something that looks like a little stick with three things attached to it that are green, white, and pink, that's in this game. Well, in the pamphlet, it says it's a rice cake. But I know exactly what that is. That's a dango. And that's the plus 50. The rice ball is plus 100. And then the multiple rice balls are uh, plus 200. And then if you see a big thing of rice, that's your full health. And then there's this medicine thing that you see in red. That's your killing ointment so to speak, and, uh, let me, uh, get through this, there we go, alright, now we'll go for Kenshin, but yeah, as I was saying, this red uh, thing that looks like an ointment is uh, your. Oh, let me wait. 
is your healing ointment. That thing I picked up, it's technically called in the pamphlet the white uh, blade, but I'm going to call it the katana. That's your battle axe, so to speak, so you get a double attack for 30 seconds. And I'm running away, just trying to explain as much as I can, because uh, I can defeat him right now. That's the dango right there. Um, the big armor thing, obviously, is your quote-unquote battle armor, which gives you double defense. If you see things that look like sandals, that's your double speed. Uh, anything else I could think of right now? No, not really. So, I might forget something here and there, but I will bring it up in future parts. But when it comes to the actual controls and layout of the actual game, this will be the only time I'll be saying it. Anyways, Kenshin Uwasuki is down. The gods have forsaken me. And also note, this is actually one of the historic battles in the game. Determination breeds victory. And that's a win. But uh, yeah, so this is actually one of those uh, historic battles, like in Dynasty Warriors 3, where you have a few off-base battles, like the uh, Mountain Bandit campaign. And uh, the raid on the Rogue Fortress and the pirate attack of the High Sea. Well, there will be a few here and there, and then there will be a few where there will be actually be real battles. Uh, there will be a few tweaks here and there with each one, but I'll talk about those as well when we get there. But uh, anyways, so our clear time is 16 minutes and 6 seconds. That's not half bad, especially for the first stage. Alright, so we have the cross spear, our second teal weapon, and I'm going to keep it. I'll discard that, discard that. For the fact that I already have a tier 2 weapon, that first tier is really useless right now. But, um, and that's another thing too, which I find a little bit strange, is for the fact that we have... Even in Extreme Legends, we have three weapon slots, but we have six teal weapons. So we're going to lose out on three. But once you unlock those teal weapons, when you go to your archives or your vault in this game, you will be able to see that you have unlocked the weapon. So that and then the missions, I'll talk about that in a bit. But anyways... So our items, we have the Demon Staff at plus one, which is your, basically your uh, um, one helm. So that's your horse attack. Uh, Cloak of Might, that's your quote unquote Naman armor. So we have that plus five. And then we have the Serpent, Brace, uh, Serpent Bracer at uh, plus four, which in Dynasty Warriors logic, it's your cavalry armor. So, anyways, so we have that. Your bodyguards, your bodyguards will actually grow based on how many bodyguards you start out with, how many survive, and how many KOs they have. And I'll tell you, when your bodyguards get to the max rank, you'll be shocked on how many KOs they can actually get. It's fucking insane. I mean, there was one time where they almost got 200 KOs. Like, it's fucking nuts. And it's a shame that when that happens, your bodyguards are already at max rank. But anyways, moving on. All right, this, yeah, this is going to take a little bit. So bear with me. Um, your experience. So you're going to be rated on five different categories. Your clear time, your item experience bonus, your mission completion, your Musu KOs, and your overall rating. And that rating will give you a certain amount of experience points, which will be added to your actual character, thus increasing your rank as time goes on. And also, you'll be able to get skill points, but I'll talk about that in a second. So, notice that when I was going through the stage that you haven't seen me really pick up anything that had a attack plus two, defense plus four, or whatever, or 
there's no quote unquote dim sum or musu wine. Well, here's the thing. You're gonna be getting all that here and then when I show you in a second, the skill tree. So with these five categories, this will help you, well, more so four, but these four categories, clear time, item experience bonus, mission completion, and Musu KOs will ultimately help you increase your attributes. Um, and that all determine, well, that will be based on how well you did in that said category and uh, what your rating is. So the highest rating you can actually get is an S rank or S rating. And it goes down to A, B, C, D, and then the lowest ranking is E. So your clear time will, you know what, let me go to the next screen. So you're gonna get growth from, well, your attributes will grow based on that said uh, category. So we're going to gain experience based on the experience I gained during the stage. Then the clear time, which will ultimately increase your speed, jump, and agility. The better the rank, the more your stats will increase in that three those three categories. So speed, jump, and agility for clear time. When it comes to experience items, that's basically, well, your clear time is basically trying to complete the stage as fast as you can. Your experience items are basically you defeating every single enemy general and officer in the stage. Also, defeating every single reserve captain in the stage. So that's how that works. And that will, if I'm not mistaken, um, I believe that will increase your range attack and defense. Um, let me get to the uh, thing here. That way I can actually confirm that. Yeah, your range, attack, and defense. Then when it comes to mission completion, that will be obviously, like I said, those missions in the bottom right corner. You have to complete every mission that pops up in your way. You can't flop a mission and then you may flop a mission here and there and now it's triggered a new mission altogether. That doesn't count. Every mission that you see, you have to fulfill like I did the, just there. So I'm not going to go into details on what the other missions are because I can't really think of them all off of the top of my head. But let's say I fucked up on a few of the missions in this stage. It may lead to a new mission altogether that you haven't seen. That doesn't count. Those missions you saw will be the missions that you have to go through to get the highest grade possible. And if you get the highest grade or if depending on how well you do with the uh, mission completion, that will ultimately increase your mounted attack and defense so that's for that musu attack ko's will increase your overall weapon attack and defense and then overall will ultimately increase your um character's rank now another thing i want to bring up first off one when it comes to your attributes you're not going to get them at the max possible. I think when it comes to actual attack and defense and all that, the most that you'll see is 300. And then your speed jump and agility will be 200. However, not every character is going to have that max number. Every character will have their own personal max in each and every attribute category. And uh, you can't go above that. I think there's a way to do that in Extreme Legends, but for here, not so much. And as I said before, 
based on how well you do in those four categories or five you'll be able to obtain skill points which will I know there's so much I can really say right now but anyways so these skill points will help you unlock stuff that will be helpful for your character and keep in mind pretty much every character has the same stuff it's just when you'll be able to unlock them so the one that I'm gonna add for sure is acclaim it gives me better experience and ratings after clearing a stage however if you look in the bottom part of the uh, section there there are requirements for you to actually see the actual skill before you even be able to unlock it so not only you need a certain amount of skill points to unlock it but you need to make sure you in this case my musu and defense are at the right number before you'll be able to even see it so that's that and then obviously any skills to the right like here first off one I don't have the right amount of defense just yet as time goes on I will but I also got to make sure I unlock this skill or actually have it before getting this one so right now I don't have enough skill points in defense but once I actually do I could actually see this skill so keep that in mind and one more big thing which changes in extreme legends but right here you need to be careful with how many um what's it called you'll get a certain amount of skill points depending on how well you do in those four ratings however that overall rating will ultimately increase your rank once you hit the max rank which is 20 you won't be able to accumulate any more skill points so you got to be careful with that so I mean the only real thing I can really say is do as much as you can if you can handle hard mode or even chaos mode then I would say go for that because you'll be able to get more skill points because there is actually a curve or not curve um, you'll get more skill points if you actually play on a high difficulty if you play on easy or normal you'll get the same amount I don't know why but you'll get the same amount hard mode you get a little bit more and in chaos you get more than that I'll throw an example out there cause I know I'm saying way too fucking much now if you get an S rank in mission completion the most amount of points you'll be able to get for that category is 200 skill, uh, 200 skill points if you're playing on easy and normal on hard you'll be able to get 300 if you have that same S rank and on chaos 400 so I'm just throwing that example out there anyways moving on um, yeah I'll, I'll just stick with a claim for now and here's our overall stats for the next stage but that will be done in the next part so And yes, it's taking a while because I do not have a save file on my memory card just yet. But anyways, there we go. And there you have it. You have been watching my gaming adventures featuring Dynasty, well, featuring Samurai Warriors. Wow, I gotta actually get, <laughs> I need to get used to that now. So you have been watching my gaming adventures featuring Samurai Warriors. And I will see you in the next part where we will go and go through the next stage, which will be the Battle of Miga Takahara. So... With that being said, peace out.